Um, next question. You said, or I heard you say that vitamin D is natural sunscreen and people on carnivore diet don't burn. Can you explain this? So I, I have never said that people on carnivore don't burn. So or they, they do. Maybe so I'm they do have an increased resistance to burn. Yeah. And the mechanism for that is that the, the vitamin D molecule is just the right size to absorb ultraviolet B radiation. And ultraviolet B radiation is the one that damages DNA and, and actually causes the reddening and the, the painful sunburn, basically. So if we actually have a look at phytoplankton, we can see that they've actually, they synthesize vitamin D and that appears to be to protect themselves from damage from the sun. Now, vitamin D, as you well know, is produced from cholesterol. So having uh, better cholesterol stores actually facilitates your body to produce a uh, more vitamin D on sun exposure. So Ansel Keys actually did a, some research. If, uh, he was of the seven country study fame and some terrible science. So he actually found that people who were exposed to more sun actually had lower cholesterol levels, which seems to support this. What we now know is that cholesterol is actually used to produce vitamin D. So if you're in the sun more, then your body will have to produce vitamin D to protect yourself from the sun. It will try to do that and it will deplete your cholesterol stores as it does so. This also explains why people with dark skin don't produce vitamin D. The reason is is that they have a chemical called melanin in their skin, which also is great for absorbing ultraviolet B radiation. So they simply don't need to produce the vitamin D because they've got this natural pigment in their skin that affords them a natural degree of sun protection from UVB to begin with. Notably though, this doesn't make one immune from sunburn. So dark skinned people, they can still get sunburned. People on carnivore diets absolutely can still get sunburned. You will be more tolerant to the sun. You, will, you'll have, uh, you won't get burnt as readily, and I can certainly speak to that. But if you spend too much time in the sun, especially at the wrong time of day, uh, when the sun is closer to being directly overhead, when the ultraviolet B radiation is strongest, then yeah, you, you will get burnt. So my advice is, and I, I truly believe in the health benefits of the sun, there's, we've got some very good evidence that um, in Denmark, for example, they did a study where they looked at people and it was a whole country study because they've got a national electronic medical record. So anytime anybody gets a diagnosis of skin cancer, they can track that through the whole country. And they found that people who had diagnosis of sun-related skin cancers basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma, on average, they lived about 10 years longer. Now, that's not to say that skin cancer makes you live longer, but almost certainly that's because the skin cancer is acting as a surrogate marker for sun exposure. And when we actually look at the science, the strongest evidence appears for, ever, for benefit from sun exposure appears to be from ultraviolet A radiation through something uh, called nitric oxide, which is when your body gets exposed to ultraviolet A, it makes a chemical called nitric oxide. That has benefits with regards to regulating the immune system as well as helping lower your blood sugar levels and stabilizing your blood pressure, so on and so forth. If you could give one health advice to our listeners, just one, what would that be? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe think about I, it think, I think it's just be natural and the the more I practice and the more I learn the closer to a hippie I become so you know these people who used to try and avoid chemicals and eat organic food and so on and so forth and it, to be fair they used to be mocked in society and I'm the older I get the closer I move to that that natural style of living. So I think it would just be, be as natural as you can.